So with FreeSync 2.0 on the way and the affordability of current FreeSync monitors, it seems like a pretty appropriate time to make this video. So let's do it. Does FreeSync matter? And is it a reason to go with AMD instead of Nvidia? Before we begin the test, let's go over what FreeSync is and why it's important to the market. We all know the importance of average frames per second when testing games. Generally, a higher average means less lag. Occasionally though, a large average could still result in sluggish and choppy gameplay, and that's simply because average FPS is a poor indicator of fluidity. More often than not, you should shoot for smooth gameplay as opposed to more FPS. I have a video already explaining that concept, so if you want more information, you can go ahead and watch that. Your graphics card and monitor work together to render frames you see. The GPU will render the frame and send that information to the monitor, and the monitor will refresh the display to show that frame. In a perfect world, these two work harmoniously to keep the environment smooth and fluid, but in the real world, they do not always cooperate. The two go out of sync when the video card renders a frame before the monitor has finished refreshing. This asynchronization creates that dreaded screen tearing that most people have probably experienced, especially if you play fast-paced titles. You see that horizontal cut in this frame? Yeah, that's tearing. A quick and dirty solution to this is VSync. When it's enabled, the GPU will send its rendered frame only when the monitor is done refreshing. Unfortunately, this increases input lag because the GPU must wait on the monitor before sending its new frame. So this is where adaptive sync technology comes in. It eliminates tearing, but without the consequence of input lag. That way you don't get stutter or tearing if your FPS dips below your monitor's standard refresh rate. FreeSync, AMD's adaptive sync technology, worked with the Video Electronic Standard Association to incorporate this support into display ports and now HDMI 2.0 ports. Now, Nvidia has their own adaptive sync technology as well, G-Sync, and it works just as well, if not slightly better, than AMD's FreeSync. The reason why I'm not going over G-Sync and why it could affect your purchase at the budget level is because of one big factor, and that's price. The cheapest FreeSync monitor on PC Part Picker right now is 110 bucks, only $20 over the cheapest new 1080p monitor. The cheapest G-Sync monitor is 350 bucks, about $250 more expensive than the cheapest new 1080p monitor. Yeah, don't plan on picking up a G-Sync monitor if you're on a tight budget. So as great as it is, adaptive sync technology isn't an all-powerful panacea that cures everything because it does have a few shortcomings. For one, it only works within a certain range. My monitor, the Dell SC2717, is a 75Hz monitor with a free sync range between 48Hz and 75Hz. This means that if my game dips below 48 FPS or above 75 FPS, the screen tearing will return. A quick fix for this is to frame limit your games if they tend to flow out of this range. More expensive monitors have bigger ranges, some ranging over 100 Hz, meaning that you're going to have adaptive sync technology capabilities pretty much all the time. FreeSync also only works in exclusive full screen mode. That's actually one thing that G-Sync has over FreeSync. It works in both windowed borderless mode and in full screen mode. Lastly, it also is only really noticeable in fast-paced titles, at least from my experience. That means that if you're not going to be playing quick titles such as Battlefield 1 or maybe Overwatch, then it might not matter to you as much. But like always, your mileage may vary. So in my $100 video card competition, I completely glossed over the idea of FreeSync altogether. While I did somewhat amend the situation through a comment, someone replied that a video showcasing FreeSync on budget hardware could be helpful, and they're right. Many people mention FreeSync as a reason to go AMD instead of Nvidia because of its fluidity and affordability, but how correct is that statement? On screen is a test of my RX 560 on Overwatch with FreeSync disabled. If you haven't utilized FreeSync before, it may look fine to you, but if you often play with VSync or use adaptive sync technology, then you can definitely see those nasty tears on screen. If you still can't notice them, then I'll slow down the video for you. As you can see, there is very clear stutter and asynchronization with the monitor's refresh rate and the graphics card's frame rendering speed, causing those gross and jagged lines on screen. Now what happens when we enable FreeSync? You get a much smoother experience. No more screen tearing and no more stuttering. Now your monitor matches the power of your graphics card as long as it's within the FreeSync range. But that's simply just Overwatch, an easier title to run even on budget hardware. 
What if we try FreeSync on heavier titles such as Battlefield 1? Would it still work? I'm currently running Battlefield 1 on medium settings using the RX 560. I'm not doing anything extraneous, just moving around, but notice the column on the right. Do you see those horrendous tears again? Here they are a lot more noticeable because of the drastic differences in contrast and color in the environment. Now imagine see that in a full scale game. It can get annoying. Let's see what happens when we add some adaptive sync magic to the mix. No more jagged lines. The game runs smoothly and I haven't tweaked the graphical fidelity at all. But yeah, it's not limited to just lighter games. So now that you guys hopefully have a decent idea of what FreeSync is and how it works, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of gameplay footage, one using FreeSync and one without FreeSync. Both scenarios are using the R5-1400 overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and an RX 560. Let's see if you can spot any differences. Sweet. Hopefully you guys saw the differences between FreeSync and non-FreeSync videos. Now in my $100 video card budget battle, I said that the GTX 1050 is overall the best buy for around 100 bucks. But do you think that AMD's FreeSync makes the RX 560 a better competitor? In order to answer that question, I want to play a little game with you guys. So I'm going to run through three to four different gameplay scenarios and I'm going to do a side by side comparison. One side is going to be using the RX 560 with FreeSync and one is just going to be using the GTX 1050 without any sync technology whatsoever. I will not label which is which until the end of the comparison. So I guess you could cheat by looking ahead, but where's the fun in that? Instead, I want you guys to identify them yourselves. Keep track of which one you think is the 560 and keep track of which one you think is the 1050 and which one feels better overall. After words decide. Does free sync matter? And if so, how much does it matter? So did you guys see any differences? How many did you get correct and which one felt like a better gaming experience to you or were they too close to call? Let me know in the comments. In a more subjective sense, I think FreeSync is a must for me nowadays. Screen tearing is very annoying even at higher frame rates where it's not as noticeable as lower frame rates. Having that extra fluidity, even if it just costs another 10, 20 bucks, is definitely worth the price for me. It kind of reminds me of mechanical keyboards. You don't really know how good it is until you try it yourself. Do I recommend FreeSync and does it matter for budget video cards? I would say yes to both of those questions. Now, do I think the RX 560 is a better buy over the 1050 because of FreeSync alone? 
not because of FreeSync alone, but I think if you accumulate everything that the RX 560 has and the 1050 has, I think that the 560 has a small lead over the 1050. So that actually gets my recommendation now. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it took a while to get this uploaded. I had a pretty crazy week last week, and I also wanted to edit this video a little bit more than usual. Quality over quantity, as I try to say anyway but yeah thank you for watching if you like it then leave a like and if you loved it subscribe because i have more videos like this coming out in the near future until next time i'll see you guys later